In this episode of Climatic, we're looking into the future of grid tech innovation. What are the big ideas that will help make our power supply greener and more resilient? Who will be leading these trends? And how do we make sure great ideas make it to market? Joining me once again are Fabian Lemke, co-founder at New Ventura, and Chi Yang Chow, a senior investment specialist at ADB Ventures. Welcome to you both. Fabian, let's start with you. Briefly, what are the key trends that you think will shape the way our grids operate in the coming years? So there's a couple of mega trends, I would say, that are happening in the electrical grid. So one of them is decentralization of electrical supply. The, the second one is grid automation, uh, which means that um, all the switching that is happening in the grid, um, organizing the power flows has to be automated, while today it's much more manual. And then we want to have something like really green grids, really grids that have the lowest possible emissions. I think these are uh, the, the trends that we're really seeing. Chiang, do you agree with the areas that Fabian just outlined? Are these the innovations where you're seeing the most opportunity for investment at the moment? Yes, I, I think I totally agree with uh, three big areas like uh, Fabian just uh, identified. Uh, of course, uh, maybe I can rephrase or, or look at it slightly from different dimension. I would say like uh, we, the, the grid needs to be smarter, stronger, and greener. So, so I think the three areas, uh, we definitely see a lot of uh, innovative technology and the solution in this, uh, these three areas. So such as uh, smart metering, uh, sensoring technology, AIoT related application in grid, and also even like a EV, you know, the EV charging that can also be a interesting supplier to decentralize the gener power generation. We all agree that grid tech is moving towards the key areas of decentralization, digitization, and fully green power. Fabian, can you explain in some more detail how these innovations are being implemented and what that means for the way our grids operate? Starting with the decentralization, uh, this kind of obvious in the past, we had these large power plants which were producing energy and supplying into the grid. There was basically one flow of electricity from the big sources to the consumers. And today we have a lot of decentralization, small solar PV plants, wind farms that are all feeding into the grid at different places. And that means that the power flow is bi-directional. We're going to see that even more when electrical vehicles start to supply power to the grid in, in peak demand times and charge due during the night, maybe when the peak supply is over. So this all means we need to have a much smarter grid. There's going to be a lot more control of the power flow and also monitoring it and maybe reacting through changing how the grid is um, switched so that the power flows in a different way. So basically managing the load. And that brings us actually to this aspect of automation. We have a lot more that needs to be managed and this cannot be done manually anymore. So all the components in that grid, specifically uh, switch gear, for example, they have to be managed by some sort of um, automated system that can, in such a decentralized grid, influence the power flow and that makes the right decisions. And for this, it needs to be possible, for example, to remote switch such switch gears, which today is in many cases not the case, in fact. So this would have to be done manually. Now, and then the last aspect, fully green grids or full green power maybe is, uh, is maybe a better term. That means that where we want to be is that we use fully renewable sources of energy. So wind, solar, um, geothermal, whatever it is. But then the energy also needs to end up with the consumer. And right now, our current grids aren't fully green. And one of that aspects is, of course, that we're using SF6 uh, in our switch gears, and SF6 is the strongest greenhouse gas. So if we really want to get to zero emissions, then we need to change the grid as well. And we need to step away from that technology and get into a more sustainable technology. Thanks, Fabian. A pretty comprehensive overview of how our grid systems are evolving. Coming to you, Chiang, this is all great in theory, but how quickly are these changes likely to happen? How do innovative young startups get their solutions into this market to create the future that Fabian has outlined? I think, first of all, to get a, like a, you know, the technology and the solution into any existing industry is challenging, right? Because uh, the technology is still early stage. It's not fully proven by the market. 
uh, and uh, sometimes the inno innovation might not be cheaper. Actually, with the early stage, smaller scale, it's more expensive. So is, this is a common challenge for any innovation. Uh, however, this, uh, this challenge is even harder for, for grids because you know, grids have to be operated in a very reliable way, uh, stable, uh, long lasting, stronger. So, so grids, uh, no matter in any country, you notice like a grid is actually uh, managed by government and the corporates with a strict regulation specification. As early stage investment, we, we are not putting in large, large size of uh, you know, uh, investment, but we want to be able to uh, pro provide uh, like support more than capital. We want to provide our you know, like a business network uh, in our you know, different uh, regions, for example, in China, in Southeast Asia, in India. And we also want to help them identify potential talents, uh, bring connections in, you know, make introductions, help them to look to you know look for new investors. So even though the trends are moving towards these three key areas of innovation, it doesn't mean that it will be any easier for startups to get their solutions to market without the help of multilateral backers like ADB. Thank you both for your time. That's it for today's discussion and this series of Climatic. Thank you for joining me as we explored how our power grids are evolving to meet the rapidly changing needs of our dynamic modern societies. Whether it's the integration of renewables, the bi-directional capabilities of EVs, the digitalization across the grid, or the greening of our power, there are many fascinating challenges ahead. But thanks to innovators around the world, such as Fabian and the New Ventura team, solutions are being found that allow grid operators to update the way they work while lowering the environmental impact of our electrical grid system. But these ideas also need to be backed by funding. Investors and the companies that can benefit from these solutions also need to step up and make their mark. That's all for me. Thank you for watching and until next time on Climatic.